my fellow Americans, there's a crisis in America, a cultural crisis. One manifestation of this problem is the number of senseless mass killings we keep seeing over the last few years. Whether it's a school shooting, a synagogue attack, or workplace violence, each new incident brings into painfully sharp focus something that most of us have felt for some time, that there's something very wrong with our culture. The mourning and soul searching that follows these tragedies is normal and necessary, and it should lead us to ask the hard questions and seek substantial changes in order to put a stop to the senseless murder of innocents. As the leader of this great country, I have the solemn responsibility to shepherd our people through times of crisis, and this is a duty I'm determined to uphold to the best of my ability, so help me God. We need solutions, though, not rhetoric. And so that's what I come before you today to offer. Real solutions that, with your participation, will put a stop to these demonic mass killings and begin to heal our culture. Many have tried to lay the blame for these killings on the tools used to carry them out, whether it's guns or knives or what are commonly called assault rifles. I believe, however, that the problem goes much deeper than tools to the heart and soul of every American. And the solution won't be as easy as simply banning any particular weapon, because making good people more vulnerable never made them safer. Listen, if I thought passing a law banning firearms from this country would put a stop to these senseless acts, I'd be advocating the destruction of every firearm in America. Unfortunately, this has been tried in other places. London and Venezuela come to mind. And it's abundantly clear that this isn't a solution, but a mad wish, a pie-in-the-sky panacea that would never accomplish our goal so long as evil exists in this world. The sad fact, my friends, is that evil does exist. There are twisted and sick people who live among us, people who regularly take advantage of the liberty guaranteed our citizens in order to sow chaos in their midst. Whether they're deranged, demonic, or just mentally ill, the reality is that they're here, and sick men will continue to pursue sick ends with no regard for law or justice. Passing laws only limits the abilities of the law-abiding, not the law-breaker. So no, more laws are not the answer. Fortunately, I believe that for every depraved criminal in our society, there are tens of thousands of good, decent people. And this will be the secret to solving our problem. Instead of legislating, I intend to lead. I hope you'll give my ideas a chance. In the past few years, millions of you have purchased guns and applied for permits to carry them in order to protect your homes and families. I understand your concern and I applaud you for doing something active in order to take responsibility for your own safety. It's my sincere belief that if every law-abiding citizen who owned a gun were to actually carry that gun within the limits of their state's statutes, the cumulative deterrent effect would be overwhelming. I encourage each of you to get trained on how to handle a firearm safely and carry your weapon with you wherever you go. In addition, today I'm calling for the formation of a new National Volunteer Police Reservist Corps who will help keep America's streets safe. As you're no doubt aware, our country's in the midst of a budget crunch. Rather than spend more of your treasure on this program, I'm asking the states to partner with the National Rifle Association to implement a thorough training program to enable this new classification. Initially, this program will be open to retired law enforcement, military veterans, teachers, flight attendants, and others who can pass a basic physical fitness test and aptitude test and complete the training to qualify with a handgun. These reserve police officers will be asked to carry their weapons at all times and will be granted very limited and specific powers to stop active killers and other criminals they encounter. They will be there to support and augment our traditional law enforcement agencies. That's all. Next, I intend to sit down with the leaders and CEOs of our fourth estate, the media, and I'll ask them to make a commitment to America to stop glamorizing and making celebrities out of mass murderers and criminals. If they will agree to never again report the name or likeness of a murderer, I'm convinced that much of the impetus that drives these suicidal cowards to seek glory on the way to hell will be removed. And finally, I'm going to call for a national conversation on violence in media. My mother used to say, you are what you eat. I believe that concept holds true not just for what goes into your mouth, but for what goes into your mind. Parents, I'm begging you to stop allowing your children to consume copious helpings of mayhem and meaninglessness through their movies and video games. While many call it simple entertainment, 
it's difficult to see how these hyper-violent forms of media add anything positive at all to our culture. Ultimately, what we have is a heart problem. We spent years teaching our children that they're nothing more than an accident of billions of years of evolution. Then we wonder why they have no self-respect. We've pretended that right and wrong were like flavors of ice cream. Whichever truth suits you is okay, but nothing is actually true or false. And then we wonder why these kinds of terrible tragedies continue to occur. We've created a culture that glorifies violence, whose heroes on the big screen regularly steal, kill, and destroy. And then we wonder why some take those lessons literally. The book of Proverbs chapter 14 says this, Righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a reproach to any people. I'd like to see America exalted again, wouldn't you? Then how can we continue to glorify sin and mock righteousness and then blame the result on guns, inanimate objects that can't hurt anyone on their own? Perhaps it's because we aren't willing to look in the mirror and then take the responsibility on ourselves. But I believe there are good men and women across America who are willing to stand in the gap and save this country. If you're one of them, please go to volunteerforamerica.com and apply for volunteer police reservist status in your state. I hope that that will make a big difference for all of us. So God bless you and God bless America.